Hello everyone and welcome to another random video on the internet. And today we have a special guest on the channel, Eternal Flame. Yo, what's good Eternal Flame here? I like to talk about Hunter Hunter, what's good? So we're gonna be talking about Hunter Hunter, like he said. And uh, today's matchup is going to be one that I think is pretty interesting. The Phantom Troop versus the main characters of the show, Gon and Killua. So we're going to be having uh, those two run a Phantom Troop gauntlet, where they basically, as a duo, face off against each member, and we'll see how they would stack up against this group. You know, the Akatsuki of Hunter x Hunter versus the protagonist. It's a pretty, pretty clear <laughs> narrative. <laughs> oh yeah, that, that's what they are. First of all, I think we should establish why this is actually a fight. Because many people will immediately say that the Phantom Troop is just a lot more experienced. By default, they, like, win. Maybe, you know, some of the lower members might get beat, but other than that, like, everybody else should stomp Gon and Killua. So I think we should go over how much stronger Gon and Killua actually get after York Mew before we hop into yeah. the matchups. So Gon and Killua get an insane amount stronger after York New because after York New they just start training a lot in both Greed Island and the Chimera Antark. And I'll let you start with Greed Island and just show how much of a difference there is between Greed Island in the start for them and in the end. Yeah, so at the start, they both struggle with like D or C tier cards. They can't catch those like weird uh th those like weird fur monsters. They can't catch them at all. And then they do some training, they're able to catch them, like, very easily. They also struggle with Injured Beanalt, you know, the scissor guy that most people have probably forgotten by now. But they struggle with an Injured Beanalt. Killua gets one of his eyes ripped out, well, almost. Not, not quite, but almost Damn. gets one of his eyes ripped out. And then by the end of their training, which is like a week time, like, they, they train for like a week with him. And by the end, they're able to casually just outpace and outspeed a fully healthy Beanalt who has rested up. So it's pretty clear that already there's like a massive difference there. Then they train with Bisky, they learn Ko, they, they learn all these Nen techniques, they learn how to maintain their Nen for longer periods of time. They get insanely stronger just from that. And then, at the end of the arc, they face off against Genthru, and Genthru was someone who they were, like, said that Gon and Killua just stood no chance against at all at the beginning of the arc. They would have just gotten slaughtered, and at the end, Gon is actually able to, like, make Genthru flinch and, like, fight him pretty well. So, yeah. there's already a pretty big gap there. Like, Gon's able to fight Genfru with a strategy. Killua was able to strategize around one of Genfru's goons and, like, beat him up so badly that it was kind of funny. Yeah, and he couldn't even use his arms too much, too, because they were, like, injured from the whole Razor battle. And then they get so much stronger over the Chimera Ant arc. Like, the, their growth in the Chimera Ant arc throws growth from Greed Island to shame how much stronger they get over Chimera Ant arc. Yeah, it's actually insane. <laughs> Yeah. I guess we should start off from the beginning, Gon and Killua go in. They face Ramit, and they they do pretty well, but none of their blows can really damage him. He, like, tanks a fully charged Jajanken to the stomach, and yeah, he, like, he screams in pain and stuff like that, but he's fine afterwards, like, he takes it and survives. Then he unlocks Nen, which we know is a pretty big boost, to say the Nen's least. Nen's like a ginormous amp. Yeah. And then yeah. Gon and Killua train for a while, they unlock more Nen abilities, and then they train with Bisky once more. They get, like, boosts from wanting to avenge Kite and stuff like that, especially Gon. And then after that, Killua runs into Ramit again, and he still gets kind of beaten up because of the whole uh, needle inside his head, telling him to, like, run away and not giving him resolve. But then when he breaks it, he just... Like, do you want to go into what he does to, to poor Ramit? <laughs> he first up just fear pressures Ramit. Ramit is not able to move a muscle. And then after that, after he tells Ramit to run and Ramit's about to try doing something, Killua speed blitz him, takes off his head and crushes his head with little to no difficulty. And this was without using any of his special Nen abilities. This was just using basic Nen, nen abilities. Yeah, like, you can even argue he might not have even used Nen entirely. Like, he's just, like, physically sprinting over to him and just... <laughs> just... Yeah. 
he doesn't even slice his head off. He just like runs past him and then just rips his head clean off before he can even perceive it. So like before they were ending, before they ended that training and after and like before their Ramit fight, they were struggling with people at the Chimera Ant soldier level. And then they just get massively stronger to the point they can one shot Chimera Ant soldiers. And then it goes even further with their scaling after Gon and Killua end up meeting Morel. Which, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, Morel, we know, is uh, a very experienced hunter. He goes into fights with Chimera and squadron leaders and comes out on top consistently. He beats Chidu, beats Leol. And then he just looks at Gon charging at Jonkin. And he just starts sweating. He he starts like thinking, "Oh damn! Like what have I gotten myself into?" I am about to die. That is legit what he thinks. He's just yeah. like, "I am about to die just from this." Everyone else is intimidated. Killua stares at this and just has a face of sadness on him. He doesn't care. He approaches Gon and snaps him out of it. Like, yeah, they're narratively implied in base to be relative a repeated amount of times throughout this arc. Yeah. And then, do you want to go into what Killua does to all those officers when he faces oh, boy, them in the yeah. forest? <laughs> when Killua goes over to the forest, right, this man ends up going through a gauntlet of Chimera Ant officers, where he starts out having to fight nine Chimera Ant officers with a guy in the air, giving them moves to try and be able to sneak attack Killua, which doesn't work, so they have to get a sniper to snipe Killua from the background while also launching a grenade at him. Killua chases <laughs> after him, kills him, and just gets Ikalgo out from them, and then he has to fight against a guy who can teleport darts into their head, and Killua still manages to counter that and gets even stronger from that fight. Yeah, like, it's crazy. He, like, develops <laughs> new abilities, like, mid-battle. And his intelligence, too, he, like, instantly deduces that, like, the fish guy is playing a dart game with him. He's memorized, like, the entire board. He's, like, thinking 20 steps ahead, like, oh, he got this many points, this many points. This means that now he'll go for my head and then... He, like, develops a new ability on the fly. And then those officers, he just murdered them with his bare hands, specifically not wanting to show off his Nen ability so that they wouldn't know what he can do. So he just goes in with his yeah. bare hands, just slaughters, like, nine officers, no difficulty. <laughs> not to mention, Gon also slaughters a bunch of officers on his own as well. Like, remember those guys? Like, one of them was like an owl bear thing. I do not remember what they were, but he takes a bunch of them out on his own. Yeah, he like, they like tag team him with strategies and like uh, supporting each other. He just tanks all their attacks and like launches one of them to another country. <laughs> he just country launches them away. Like, yeah. no difficulty. <laughs> he like punches them away like Saitama, man. <laughs> So, so yeah, Gon and Killua are pretty strong. We won't yeah. be giving them uh, adult Gon, because, you know... TACTICAL NUKE INCOMING! And then, yeah. and then Godspeed, uh, Eternal Flame has already made a video on Godspeed Killua versus Hisoka, so I suggest you check that out if you want to see where Killua with Godspeed would stack up against the Phantom Troop. Yup. And yeah, so that's the entire, that's like Gon and Killua's main base form scaling, because after this point, they don't really have many fights they do in base form. Like, Gon does have one final feat of intimidating P2 and what was it called again, poof in his base form, but like that's just Nen pressure. I don't think they actually would be able to take uh, P2 and like poof out in base form. Yeah, I would say so, because Pito is more so intimidated because of the whole Kamugi thing. And she's, uh, she, yes, she, <laughs> uh, she says that uh, like Gon's fangs might sink into the king even before he transforms. But it's more so just like I feel the potential that he that she sees in him. So yeah, yeah I, I think it's not really relevant for this matchup. Yeah, it'd also just be unfair because it's just like, okay, now we have the cheese argument. We no longer need to do this <laughs> entire video because they all get taken out by this if he actually scaled to them. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's <laughs> like stated that Pito can like decapitate Gon with one arm or something. Like yep. That. So so yeah. But yeah. moving on to the actual 1v1 matchups, 
So uh, in the lowest tier, we have four members, which is, uh, the lowest tier is the Confident Ws for Kilua and Gon. First up is Cortopi, yep. and I don't think anybody will uh, claim otherwise, like... <laughs> nah, he's gonna drop a building on them. Just wait, he's gonna show he's the man. <laughs> <laughs> right, you remember that time he stood against Phaeton and uh, Finks uh, alongside <laughs> Machi and was confident he could beat them? Right. Because confidence always tells us everything about power scaling. Yep. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> he, he, he like spawned 50 buildings in a second. He's gonna, he, he's large city level gonna drop a, <laughs> drop some buildings on him. But, but, Drops all the buildings. Yeah, yeah. but in, in all honesty, like, you know, Cortopi, the guy who got like off-screened. So like, yeah, 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 he's probably not doing much. He's not a combat type. Same with Pakunoda. Is, and like Pakunoda just has the unfortunate reality of... She got damaged by York New Gone and Killua, and I think she got her arm broken by them, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Like, yeah. granted, it so, was off guard to some extent, but still, it's like, it's not Gone a good and showing. Killua have gotten several times stronger since they off guarded her. There's no amount of off guard that's gonna make up for how much damage she took and how much stronger Gone and Killua have gotten in comparison to back then. Yeah, because Killua, yeah. one thing we didn't mention also, Killua is able to like open up the gates, uh, like way more gates later on when he returns to his house, which is, I'm pretty sure he opens like four times the weight that he opened the first yeah. time when he entered the, his house in the Zoldekark. So just like his physicality, probably not even using Nen, is already like four times stronger than he used to be. So... Yeah. Especially with the needle being gone too, just full yeah. physical potential at that point. Up next we have Kaluto, which Kaluto is a bit harder to explain in comparison, but Kaluto just when they see Phaeton fight, they outright admit inferiority and just are like, I am nowhere near these guys level. And this is when Phaeton was fighting a Zazan, a non- like Zazan's a squadron leader, but she wasn't transformed at that point. And Kaluto looked at that and is just like, I don't stand a chance. So Kaluto is pretty handedly just below Phaeton's level and below Chimera and Squadron le leader level. Yep, and her best feat is like slaughtering an officer, but it's like slaughtering one officer with your Nen ability versus slaughtering nine of them without showing off your Nen ability and then running an entire gauntlet of officers. Like th there's a pretty yeah. clear gap between them and their brother. <laughs> Kilo was showing them why they the little sibling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Up next is Shizuku, who Shizuku is kind of in a similar boat to Kaluto, where they struggled with a Chimera Ant Squadron, or not Squadron Leader, they, they struggled with a Chimera Ant Soldier, and like sure, I feel that Chimera Ant Soldier was stronger than average because they actually had a name, but even then they still yep. struggled with that tier, when Killua and Gon have demonstrated several times they are just outright above this tier. Yeah, like, P Pike's a Chimera Ant Officer, like, he's, he's pretty strong. And it is yeah. stated that his webbing can't be broken by, like, the strongest officer they have. But yeah. even then, it's not really much of a feat when Killua by himself is going around running entire gauntlets of officers. And then <laughs> going on top of that, like, with a Jjonken, with, like, electricity hacks and all that. Like, Shizuku's not really stacking up to all that. Even then, yep. like, even in York New, she actually loses, like, an arm wrestling match to Gon. And granted, that uh, is without that men. She, that was also because she was using her left arm, which was, like, implied to be her weaker arm. Yeah, but there's, like, another thing which uh, I actually looked into before the recording. The dominant arm of a person is only around, like, 10 to 20% stronger than their other oh. arm. So it's not really much of a difference. And, that is uh, fair. She might not have been using Nen, she probably wasn't, but neither was Gon, and Gon has gotten, like, way stronger physically and way stronger in terms of Nen since then, so, yeah, he's probably physically stronger than her as well. Yep. She doesn't have the skill to keep up with that tier of fighter. Yeah. Hey, future Satri cutting in here. We actually had to record Bono Lenov separately, and then I lost the recording somehow. I don't know where it went. So, I guess I'm alone for this section. So, Bono Lenov definitely goes in the confident Ws for Gon and Killua. His... His performance against Chimera and Soldiers is just not good. He faces off against a nameless ant, which still uses guns for combat. 
and he performs a named Nen attack on him. He conjures a spear, drives it into the soldier. The soldier laughs it off and takes no damage whatsoever. Compare this to Gon and Killua who can tear apart officers and soldiers with their bare hands and yeah, Bonilenov is not doing well. The best argument you could make for Bonilenov is that he, alongside a few others, was kind of confident that he could face off against transformed Zazan if Phaeton failed. And he was actually like the next one up to face Zazan if Phaeton had failed. So, at best, you could say that he can just like perceive those two moving and his reaction speed is somewhat relative to theirs. But even then, his combat speed is definitely not at that level. Like, he's impressed with the speed of sound, which I don't know if you know this, bullets can travel at the speed of sound. Gon and Killua, Killua especially, faces off against dozens of armed soldiers controlled by Pito and dodges their bullets just fine. On top of that, he's confident he can face off against jets, like fighter jets, military aircraft, which can also go th over the speed of sound. So, yeah, things aren't looking good for Bonilenov. You could argue that maybe with Jupiter he could, like, kill a squadron leader, because again, he was confident he could face off against Zazan. But even then, like, Gon and Killua aren't just going to sit there and let it happen. They can dodge it, they can attack preemptively to prevent it from happening, and they can stun Bonilenov and just kill him with Jjankens and just ripping his heart out and stuff like that, so... Yeah, the mummy is getting put back in his coffin, he's definitely losing here. A similar thing applies to a lot of the troop, actually, specifically the ones that saw Zazan fighting Phaeton. They were all kind of not phased for the... from the fight itself. But again, confidence doesn't necessarily mean that they actually do scale to that level. And even if they did, at best you could say their speed scales to that level and they were just gonna use, like, the blinky suck suck thing to, like, suck up their blood or just Jupiter to one shot or just winding up their arms to one shot, you know? Like, at best you can scale them up to squadron leader speed, which Gon and Killua do scale to. And then after that you just get, like, two characters that are as fast as a squadron leader and have better hacks against one character who's as fast as a squadron leader and doesn't actually scale to them without their strongest moves. So yeah, definitely Bonilenov loses here. Pretty, pretty low difficulty, I would say. And then moving on to the next tier up, it's kind of the unknown tier, which is like all these characters should still lose, but it's just like we don't really know where they scale exactly because they haven't really shown us anything yet. So first yep. up is going to be Franklin. Franklin's only feat is shooting bullets at people, and like. And these are like, these were normal people, and one of them was a Nen user, but I think they were a Nen scrub. Like they have no feats. Yeah, and then he yeah. he's like confident that he can take on Hisoka by himself on the Blackwell, and you know, maybe he can. Who knows? But until we actually see that happen it's the same deal as Cortopi being confident he can face off against Phaeton like hey for yeah. all we know Franklin might secretly be number one of the Phantom Troop and we all just been judging him wrong yeah he might be it's possible you yeah. know Franklin Ultra Instinct coming in with like machine guns and Franklin Instinct <laughs> Monster Instinct comes in just oh, transforms no. reveals like an another form <laughs> yeah. But Nobunaga it, is in a similar tier, like, similar area to Franklin is, because he just doesn't have any feats. Yeah, they, like, fight fight off against each other, too. They, they like, fight... It also was Nobunaga, like, fought Gon and Killua in York New, which means he scales above them in York New, obviously, but we just don't know by how much or how he scales yet. This might change later on in Hunter x Hunter when it continues, because Nobunaga looks like he's about to fight some people, but still. Yeah, so, for now, we just don't know, that's what we're saying, because, like, they just don't really have those kinds of feats yet, as, a, in the story. They don't really fight anybody yeah. relevant. It is stated that, like, he can just one-shot and blitz Gon and Killua from York New, but again, Killua can one-shot himself from the Chimera Ant arc by now, so... Yeah. It's not really doing... It's not really York scaling New him Killua above. Just, York New Killua just ain't him. Yeah. And then, moving on, next up we have Machi. 
Now, Machi's an interesting one, because the one and only feat she has is reacting quicker than everybody else to Uvogin being chained up and uh, escorted away from the battlefield by Kurapika. But the thing is, yeah. we actually see every other member, like, reacting to it. And then they even talk about what happened. Like, d did you see what happened? Yeah, some chains wrapped around Uvogin and took him away. So, like, they all saw it. It's just that Machi was, like, fast enough to, like, react to... to the... Machi was fast enough to actually do something about it, unlike the rest of them. Yeah, I view this more so as, like, her being, like, a quick thinker, that sort of thing. Like, she's, she's quick on her yeah. feet, she, like, notices something going on and immediately acts upon it, unlike the rest, which are kind of surprised. Yep. You might be able to argue that she has, like, the speed to sort of keep up with Gon and Killua, maybe, if you say she's, like, relative to Phaeton and people like that, or, like, above them slightly. But yeah. even if you do that, she still doesn't really have any, like, attack potency feats or durability feats. I'm pretty sure in the manga, Killua actually, like, sort of injures her with, an, with his attack. Because in the anime, he, she just, like, tanks his blow with, like, her muscles and then just traps his arm. Yeah. But in the manga, I'm pretty sure he actually does some damage. Like, she bleeds because of the kick. I'm j I just noticed, like, Killua kicks her, and then she's shown bleeding from her mouth. But you can argue that's off guard. And then Killua attacks her I'm with a Nen cool. Enhanced Strike, and then she, like, takes it. That damn... That is still just impressive, nonetheless. Yeah, that is impressive for sure, but... Also, I'm just realizing, it's not even to her... It's not even to her stomach in the manga, it's straight up to her chest. <laughs> <laughs> like, if you look at the panel... He knows what he was doing. <laughs> I mean, he was going for the heart, but still, like... Yeah. <laughs> he was doing that Kakashi meme where, like, fast its way to a girl's heart, Chidori. <laughs> Kibawa really did take lessons from his older brother, Kakashi. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> but then, moving on, we have Shalnark. And he's another weird one, because in base he struggles with an officer. But then he uses autopilot and turns Super Saiyan and kind of just disintegrates the officer. Like, he just, like, just disappears. <laughs> but yeah, like... He doesn't even attack him intentionally, he just walks away from him. And did that kills the officer, which yeah. I mean, it's good scaling, but we don't know the upper limits of that. So yeah, so like he kills an officer by existing, but then Killua like yeah. runs an officer gauntlet without using his Nen ability. So like, which is more impressive? How long can Shalnar keep up his autopilot mode? Because we know it's draining; He'll, his muscles like hurt afterwards. But yeah. like, how long can he go? How much can he do? We just don't know. So, well, we do kind of know how long he can go. He, he only can do it, like, for a few moments, and then he's forced to deactivate it. Like, he can only do one task. Yeah, he can do one task, so, like, when the task is over, he then deactivates it. Like, yeah. I'm pretty sure the little, like, bot in his hand actually says, like, target terminated or something like that, and or, like, task complete, and then, like, deactivating, and then he, like, returns to base one. I feel like it's task complete, but, yeah. Yeah, probably. So, yeah, yeah. like, he, we just can't really quantify where he is, and sadly, we won't be able to, because, you know. <laughs> Maybe we might get a flashback, we don't know. But yeah, right now, Maybe. we can't. But yeah, like, I'm, I'm sad, bro. Shalnark was one of my favorite members. Sad that he... Discounted Lumi was pretty good. I'll give him that. <laughs> so then, moving on to the next tier, which is, like, actually the debatable characters. We have Finks first up, so you can go into Finks. Finks is super weird to me. I feel like Finks does have the attack potency to take on and kill while out, but that's only if he is actually allowed to wind up his arm. If he is not, he is losing because he can't actually... Like, his attacks only tickle a Chimera and Squadron soldier, or, like, officer, which is why he lets him straight up just, like, choose the next attack, and he's just gonna tank it, because he's confident enough that he can take whatever attack Finks will land on him. He just didn't know Finks' ability. Yeah, and on top of that, Finks thinks that Razor is, like, an impressive foe, and he, he like, notes this right off the bat, just by the way Razor, like, carries himself and just, like, his presence. Finks is like, yeah, this guy's strong, like, watch out. But then, yeah. later on, Gon is, like, able to somewhat contend with him. Which, you know, I don't think Gon in Greed Island would beat Finks, but I'm just saying, like, you can make that argument. 
So, Fink's yep. overall is pretty weird. He's like part of that combat squad together with Nobunaga and uh, Phaeton. But we just don't really know how strong he truly is. You know, maybe he could go into the unknown tier, but I feel like he's above those people, so we just yeah, placed him in the because debatable he does, tier. Like, he has actual scaling in a way to take out Gon and Killua, which is if he can wind yeah. up his arm. Just, I don't see Gon and Killua letting him wind up his arm. Yeah, because, like, he, they're gonna, like, scrap a little bit. Finks is gonna realize that, oh, like, I'm getting kind of outpaced, you know, let me, let me wind up my arm to beat them up. And then they're gonna see him, like, w just winding up his arm. And, like, two or three times is more than enough for them to realize that Nen is gathering in his arm and then just go on the offensive. Killua using, like, lightning palm and stuff like that to, like, st stun him and then go on charging in with yeah. Jijankens or whatever. I'm pretty sure they can still beat things. Right all I'm imagining right now is just like Sasuke and Naruto when they just decided to tag team Kaguya immediately upon seeing her <laughs> enter, but instead yeah. he just dies immediately. <laughs> yeah. Bro, they, they jump him like they jumped Momoshiki too. Yeah. <laughs> just, gets, just... You know that like fight I back team? That, that's what they're gonna yeah. do. It's like, I'm pretty sure Finks can take a few blows, it's just that he doesn't really have... Like, he, he has a way to victory. But it doesn't, doesn't have a way of assuring that way to victory, if that makes sense. Especially because of Killua's entire moveset and how he's like, uses it, which is mainly just to stun people. And that's yeah. just the worst possible opponent for Finks. Yep. So up next we're moving on to Phaeton, which Phaeton was by far the most interesting of the matches in my opinion. Because of how Phaeton's powers work. Gon is going to be not a non-factor, but he's going to end up hurting their chances more than helping their chances, if I'm going to be honest. This is mainly reliance on Killua, and if Killua can stun Phaeton before he can activate any of his powers and activate Pain Packer. Yeah. So, for yeah. baseline Phaeton scaling, we know that when he's rusty, he's in that squadron, in, like, uh, leader tier. And uh, when he's, like, not rusty anymore, like, he's still rusty by the end of the fight. But he's pretty soon yeah. able to, like, outpace, um... Non-armored Zazan. Yeah, he's pretty confidently able to outpace her and to uh, sort of destroy her. Not destroy, but, you know, just overwhelm her. But then, when she transforms, he cannot do anything to her at all. And yeah. Zazan, you know, she's pretty strong when she transforms, but I don't think she's in that, like, Royal Guard tier or anything like that. She's so, the strongest of the Chimera and Squad. Like she's the strongest of the Chimera and Squadrons that we see. It's just she is still below Royal Guard tier by a long shot. Yeah, and then Phaeton can't do anything to her. I'm pretty sure Gon and Killua, like with a Jijonken, probably could do something to her. But that's kind of headcanon. The main thing yeah. that I'm getting at is that Phaeton's physicality isn't really. It's it's not going to fall far behind Gon and Killua, but it's not going to outpace them either. Like I'm pretty sure he's like relative to them. He could probably yep. tango with them in a two on one, but it's not going to be an easy task. It's going to be like high diff for him. They'll still be landing hits and stuff like that. But then yep. with Pain Packer, like that that's the interesting debate there. there they because... are getting up. <laughs> Yeah, they like, aren't getting go, up. He Zazan's like, lungs were so hot, <laughs> she couldn't stand. Yeah, like, he got his arm broken, and just from that, he brought in the sun. Like, what's gonna happen if Gon punches him with a Jonkin and, like, breaks a few ribs? Like, he's gonna summon, like, a yeah. neutron star or something, like... <laughs> Summons a blue giant, <laughs> yeah, just out of nowhere. <laughs> Bro, the final stage of the Pain Packer, Black Hole. <laughs> you thought you were stronger than me? <laughs> Who decided that? <laughs> Cruel son! <laughs> Bro, that's gonna... <laughs> gonna... No, Phaeton's gonna become Escanor after <laughs> taking all that damage. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, Gon is just gonna hurt them a lot in the match. Yeah. I feel like the best thing Gon and Killua have going for them is that Killua is like that on-site guy, like he just sees you and he goes for the kill. Cause yeah. against Machi, like in, in the anime it's a little bit different, in the manga he just goes straight for her heart. He also goes like right for the heads of all the Chimera Ant leaders that he faces. And he like yeah. targets the heart and the head all the time when he fights. So if Their he's best the chance one for winning. To... 
their best chance for winning this is Killua stunning him and then telling Gon to focus on Phaeton's heart. That is the best way I can see them winning. Yeah. And personally, yeah. I would say, like, Killua just, like, counting on Gon to make a good enough distraction to, like, rip out Phaeton's heart or something like that, because he, he's, like, that yeah. on-site guy. He's gonna go for the heart. It's just a matter of if he can actually reach the heart, because if he can, like, Killua's... All of Killua's moves are going to be, like, almost instant kills, and because that's what yeah. he's aiming for. So Pain Packer isn't gonna happen if Killua is able to, like, get a kill shot in right away. But if he can't, yep. and if Phaeton stacks up damage, then it's... it's over. It's like... Huge problem with this also is, they don't know Phaeton's abilities. Yep. Which is gonna go really well in Phaeton's advantage in this entire fight. Yeah. Another, a funny interaction I could see is that if uh, Phaeton's sword clashes with, like, the scissors from Gon, that could be pretty cool. I feel like if Togashi yeah. rode that battle, he could probably sneak that in. But, 100%. Uh, but other than that, I feel like this is more so like a 50-50 matchup. Like, this is where we get into that, like, really debatable tier because of I'm how personally... Phaeton's abilities work. Yeah, I'm personally leaning closer to Phaeton winning rather than Killua in Gon, purely because I don't think they're going to put him down fast enough for Pain Packer to activate, or before Pain Packer can activate. But I can also see why it'd be a 50-50. Yeah, I, I would agree. I'd, st I'd say Phaeton definitely has a good chance, like m maybe 55 to 45, you know, so something like that. Yeah, that I can say. Last up in this tier is going to be the muscle head of the group, Uvogin. So, uh... He's also kind of weird. Yeah. Satori was going on to me about this earlier on, like before we even started recording, just how physically busted Uvogin might actually be. Because you know Krolo is, like, Krolo's really strong, right? He told me, like, Uvogin's considered the physically strongest of the group, which would put him above the striking strength of Krolo, who can keep up with Zoldix. Yeah. Yeah, because, like, <laughs> Krolo even says, like, yeah, Uvogin, like, that guy... Like, in physical combat, nobody's beating him. Like, you need a plan to beat him. Like, I, no, nobody's beating him in physical combat. And, of course, that's not including, like, the Royals or anything. But for Krolo yeah. to say that, Krolo's the guy that can, like, block punches from, like, Silva and Zeno. So, <laughs> it's... Man was fighting them both at the same time, and they both were trying to kill him. Yeah, and then Zeno, yeah. like, or Silva can, like, one-shot squadrant leaders, and... Uvogin yeah. is just like might unironically have like greater physical strength than they do. <laughs> like, yeah. In a fight, like I'm pretty the... sure the Zoldix would still win because of like then abilities and like stuff like that, but yeah. still, it's like Uvogin's just raw physical power is just insane. Yep. And like the thing I see Uvogin winning with is just big bang attack, nuking the ground, and just launching Gon and Kilo away. I think they can survive one big bang attack. Problem is, what are they gonna do about the second one, Anoki? <laughs> <laughs> Meteor, like I'm pretty sure that there's like a a scan of like Uvogin wants to one day be able to punch with the force of a nuclear bomb. And so yeah. you know, if he can somehow reach that tier, like if he has enough potential for that level of power, he might be one shotting Merom, I don't know. Damn. Damn. Uvogin with training versus Maruam video coming soon. Part free Rosemary versus Uvogin with training coming soon <laughs> for the future. Yeah. But, like, what we're getting at is that Uvogin physically is just an, an insane tank who can, like, take bazookas to the face and all that stuff. But yeah. his speed is, like, the only questionable thing. Because Krolo, like, does say he can't be beat in physical combat, but that doesn't mean he can't be outsped in physical combat. Like, you could still, like, run circles around him and just not be able to, like, damage him at all with physical yeah, like strikes. It, might just, so be it's like... it might just be sheer raw durability, but at the same time, I'm not as sure about that. Because I think Uvagin can at least keep up with Krolo, or else I don't think Krolo would make that statement, considering Krolo's abilities and how he works. That you can't beat him without a plan. Yeah. I'd say yeah. that's fair. So overall, like, Killua and Gon, like, with a fully charged Duncan, like, they probably could damage him. But the thing is, like, yeah. he's not... Actually, like, I was gonna say he's not going to sit there and let it happen, but he actually would. Like, he, he genuinely would. Be. <laughs> He'd be like, oh, you're an enhancer too, let's... 
charge up your greatest they're attack, I'll charge fists. up mine. Like, yeah, they're, they're gonna, like, <laughs> clash fist, like, big bang impact versus G fully charged Jankan. <laughs> like, and the side effect from the attack, Killua dies, because, like, it's like Sasuke and Naruto's incumbent, like, when they both launch an attack at each other in just a massive range, Killua just gets wiped out because he was nearby. <laughs> <laughs> now, Killua tries to sneak Uvogin from behind, and like, you know how Phaeton's like sword breaks on impact against Zazan? Like, Killua's hand is gonna break on impact on Uvogin's skin. Killua's hand's gonna break, Uvogin just looks to Killua and spits a tooth out at him and one shots him that way. <laughs> that, that's actually pretty wild. But no, I think yeah. I think Kilo is like strong. I think he might be able to like scratch Uvogin, but like yeah. Uvogin's still in that like upper echelon of the series where he might actually have like physically superior stats to even the Zoldix. So man's been dead for a while and still get managed to get upscaled somehow. <laughs> yep. You know, yep. Uh, like like all those uh, Kakazu uh, beats from Naruto. <laughs> nah, he's the he's what Kakazu should have been. <laughs> yep. But yeah, then uh, I, I think we both agree yeah. that Uvogin wins pretty confidently. Yeah. Like, I, I just don't see what Gon and Killua are doing. Like, maybe one of you guys might come up with a strategy for them? I don't I don't know. Oh, I was gonna say, they just need Godspeed or, like, the adult form to beat Uvogin right now. Yeah. And then moving up to the last year, which is pretty confident Ws for the troop. It's gonna be Illumi yeah. first up. Illumi just like scales to Hisoka, who scales to Krolo. So I'm, I'm pretty sure that's like yeah. all that really needs to be said. You can also yep. argue that Killua is like scared of Illumi, but that might just be like him uh, not wanting to fight family members, PTSD, like you said. Yeah, like yeah. there are like multiple explanations. But even yeah. then, like I still think Illumi would just be like above him. Yeah, I think, like, Killua needs Godspeed to beat Illumi. The thing is, with, like, Illumi, yeah. Hisoka, and Krolo is, they all scale to a one-shot tier when it comes to Chimera and Squadron Leaders, because they scale a one-shot level higher. You can try and make the argument for Gon that he does, because he is able to make someone who can fight Chimera and Squadron Leaders terrified for death, but you can't really make that argument fully. Yeah. Because, yeah, they don't actually one-shot a Squadron Leader. Yeah, Morel also, like, physically, he's not really taking, like, full power attacks from squadron leaders, like the strong ones. Chidu, obviously, he does take a bunch of attacks from him, but he's kind of weak physically. Yeah, so, like, his, his Nen abilities are trash, because he's bad with Nen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. overall, like, Hisoka, Krolo, and Ilumi should still win pretty confidently against base Gon and Killua. I feel like Hisoka would be a, a little too happy with the matchup, though. Like, getting to fight yeah. Gon and Kilo at the same time, he might actually... I don't want to talk about that. He's gonna let them get stronger. Yeah, he, he's oh. gonna, like, let them, like, pummel him, and then is just gonna, like, rip out his heart off guard or something. I don't know. <laughs> That's our only win con. <laughs> yeah. Hisoka's just too distracted doing Hisoka things. Yeah. So, yeah, mm. overall, like, Gon and Kilo do surprisingly well. But they do still lose out to at least the top three or four, with Phaeton being very debatable, in my opinion. Yep, I agree with that. And it's still impressive, because this is only us talking about them in base form. Yeah. In their transform states, they get a lot higher. Like, they might just solo the entire... Uh, Gone especially. Yeah, Gone, Gone especially Gone. solos the Phantom Troop. But, like, if you take the entire Phantom Troop... Okay, I'm, I'm gonna piss some people off, but take the entire Phantom Troop, turn them all into Krolos, like... 13 <laughs> Krolos, that Jajankin is still just disintegrating all of them. One-shotting them all. Because, like, this the thing about Pito's statement of Gon might be able to bear his fangs into the king, this is before they see Jajankin. Oh, this true. is just normal Gon's <laughs> attacks. Like, people forget that. Pito yeah. doesn't know what Jajankin is. <laughs> yeah, he's just like a one-shot tier above Meruem, maybe. Like, yeah. I think it's it's kind of far-fetched, but at the same time, it's kind of not. Especially if you yeah. if you consider, like, Gon speed as well. I went over this in my Netero versus Gon video. But Gon speed might speed. actually be scalable to, like, Meruem tiers and above because of the whole uh, uh, Blitzing Pito thing. Because Pito can still, like, somewhat see Netero's moves. 
but she just yeah. cannot see Gon's moves at all. And then Meruem is like barely able to follow Netero's after image, so Gon might just be faster than Meruem. Oh, and Gon's be killed with scales to this in speed because he's able to keep up with post-mortem Nenpito. <laughs> Yeah, if, if you want details on Godspeed Killua, feel free to check out Flame's video. It's really good. Yeah. But yeah, this was a ton of fun to record. Uh, thank you, Eternal Flame, for recording. Oops. Happy to be here. <laughs> but yeah, this was a ton of fun to record. Thank you, Eternal Flame, for coming on. Happy to be here. And uh, yeah, thanks everybody for watching. We shall see you next time. Goodbye. Godspeed Killua beats Isoka. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> that was fun. <laughs>